Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the South Borough Housing Opportunity Partnership Committee meeting for Wednesday, May 30th. Uh, we we'll started calling the meeting to order at 7.31 p.m. Uh, first item on the agenda um, are the approval of the minutes from 4.10 and 5.3. Jesse, could you uh, make the motions? And Andrew, could you second those motions, please? Uh, make a motion that uh, the uh, Shopsy uh, approve the minutes from our meeting. Um, what was the date? 410. On uh, April 10th, 2023. Andrew, you're muted. <laughs> Second. Okay. Any discussion? Yeah, I just have one quick comment. Okay. On the, the, the 410 meeting minutes, line 67. Yeah. Um, where it said the impact of this legislation should be absorbed over time. Yeah. Um, it better say like legislation will likely be absorbed. I'm not sure I agree that it should be absorbed over time, but I'm not sure it's a concern. It will likely be absorbed over time. That's the only correction I have. Okay. Will likely be absorbed. Um, does okay. anybody have a, an issue with that change? <laughs> Nobody? Okay. So, um, Jesse, you've got to, got to make the change in motion. Uh, so I think we, we just would say uh, as amended. Okay. All right. Um, this is a roll call vote, Jesse. Yes. Andrew? Aye. Uh, Doug? Aye. And Dorian is an aye. The minutes are approved. Okay. Uh, Jesse, move to the May 3rd minutes. Uh, I move. We approve the minutes from the Shopsy meeting on May 3rd, 2023. Someone second. got a second. Okay. All those in, uh, any discussion? Dan, since I um, was not at that meeting. Okay. All right. This is a roll call vote. Jesse? Aye. Uh, Andrew? Abstain. Okay, Doug? Aye. Okay, Tom? You are muted? Aye. Okay, Dorian is aye. Okay, the minutes are approved. Welcome, Tom. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry I'm late. I had a little trouble oh. logging on. I lost my old email account. Turns out they changed some system in the town. Yeah, they changed website. the whole website. <laughs> yep, they changed the whole website over. Um, okay, so uh, next thing on our agenda is the one-stop um, grant update. Sarah sent that application to everyone. You should have gotten an email so you see what we're going to be talking about now. And Sarah, I'm going to hand the meeting over to you to discuss this. Sure. So um, I have been working with uh, Vanessa to get this application prepared for submission in advance of uh, the deadline date, which would be Friday. Um, but we're actually in good shape to submit it before noon tomorrow. Um, so we're just making sure that we're getting all of the details in um, so that it's a competitive application, um, noting uh, exactly what sections of the bylaw we're really wanting them to focus on in regards to removing, you know, some of the housing barriers, including, you know, things like the um, section 174-9H1G, which is that 7% housing cap um, that we've talked about, you know, quite a few times, you know, in terms of the multifamily housing for the elderly. Um, and a few of those other, you know, problematic uh, points within the zoning. So we're trying to write in, again, as many, uh, you know, timeline dates and deadline dates uh, that we can. Um, Vanessa just sent me the date for annual town meeting for next year. So trying to sort of back in, in regards to, you know, what, the expectation would be of the consultant that we would hire to make sure that they were meeting those deadlines in advance of annual town meeting um, in the spring so that there would be verbiage that we could present um, for that approval and hopefully, you know, again, to remedy some of the barriers that are in the zoning bylaw. 
um, in terms of legislation. So that's so, that. so we're set unless we make changes in this tonight. We're and even if we do, you can change them, but we're set to go with this to hand it into the state. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a pretty straightforward application. Um, you know, it does ask us to upload some supporting documents, including uh, a potential scope of work for the consultant. So I'm working on that. Um, we're going to upload the HPP. We're going to upload um, some sections of the master plan, um, you know, sections of the bylaw that we're having them look at, as well as a few pages from the subcommittee report. Um, just to kind of bolster, you know, it, it asks for us to present, you know, work to date on, you know, um, showing some of the capacity that we've built to try to, you know, advance this project along before asking for these funds. So we're just going to make sure that we present them with the most well-rounded picture of what we've accomplished so far. Okay. Do they want any part of our strategic plan, our five-year strategic plan, so, to show them how serious we are with trying to get this implemented? Yeah, I think that would probably be another good um, document to upload either, uh, you know, in in its entirety or maybe portions of. Yeah, Sarah, just too much you said, you know, the HPP has a couple of sections specifically on on zoning bylaw barriers to housing and right. our consultants recommendations i mean those you can probably pick the cherry pick those right out of the hpp which you know we paid whatever 15 20 thousand dollars to have to have this consultant give us recommendations and now we want to implement those recommendations yeah now, i thought we had something in the strategic plan too that sort of implemented some of this stuff too as well yes yes absolutely um, so it's a pretty good, pretty yeah. good foundation i would highlight you know, highlight those and make sure that they're noted, you know, so they could actually see them or just pull those pages in um, and yeah. in front and then give them the whole document, but really show them. We're not, you know, we're not just looking not from picking the straws. It's yeah. really that, trying you know, to move right. this housing issue. It is a very interesting application in the sense that these fields um, require a character count so not just a word count it is a character count so um you are you have to be very strategic in what you are saying because it goes pretty fast you know when you're adding in periods and spaces in between <laughs> words um but you know where we can get a lot of that information uh you know to them for review is through the supplemental material that we'll upload Okay, perfect. And um, when we have an absolute final of what was sent in with all the documents included, um, could you please send an email out and include this board and all the members and send those documents to all of us? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Yep. Thanks, Sarah. Appreciate it. Hey, Sarah, Jim. can you remind me again what the amount of the, uh, I know this came before the select board uh, last week, but what the amount of the application is for? So it's for 30000 Okay, thank you. And so I did, you know, I did ask for a breakdown. And so um, I I did break it down for 29,000 for the consultant. And then I put in a thousand for sort of outreach and events. Cause I, I'm hoping that, you know, if we get this grant that we'll be able to do a really comprehensive sort of marketing campaign and outreach program. And so I just, you know, sort of arbitrarily put 500 in for events and 500 in for like um, planning and marketing. But if anybody has any other thoughts on on that breakdown, I'm welcome to it. My two cents of the breakdown is may, maybe shift more towards that marketing piece because that probably okay. is more money. And I, that 30, 29,000 sounds rich for the consultant to do all this. It, am I, am it I does, wrong on this? It, it does to me too, um, you know, so I could, I could definitely break that down a little further and add more to marketing, maybe. Just, to, just out of curiosity, how did the, where did the 30,000 come from? Is that just kind of a randomly picked figure? Or is that, yeah, that, or is that was, something that we priced yeah. out or yeah, we, you know, so we, we did not get any, the, the one thing that we um, could have done potentially is try to, is try to farm this out to a few consultants and get some um, preliminary estimates. Um, but we just figured, you know, given the fact that this is sort of a, a broader and more in-depth scope of work um, and, you know, what we've paid for, for comparable um, assessments in the past, it just seemed like a reasonable um, ballpark number, but it, it, 
definitely was uh, again sort of uh, just pulled <laughs> out of um, you know yeah based on some based on some past experience I and mean, we did hire a, call, a consultant last year for the downtown um, district and we probably paid a chunk of money for, for those, those people to help out with the writing of that bylaw and things yes. like that so that might be some yeah. Yeah, and I think I could be wrong, but I think they paid them like like fifty or seventy thousand really? for that. Man, I gotta get that line of work. A quite quite a large sort of fee. But they got the they got the forty thousand dollar one stop last year that they used towards that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, and to to my knowledge, I, I think that they they paid some money in addition to that. So, um, you know that that was kind of how we came up with that number. Okay. Thanks. So two quick questions, um, Sarah. First, I only saw a number that was forty-two thousand in the application, um, and is that so for something different, or was I misreading? Because I didn't see a thirty. I just, I mean, I just got this afternoon when I was scrolling through. On no, I think I page think, eight. It was forty-one yes. and five hundred. Yes, I think that that was actually a typo. Okay. So more is better, but you know, I, I, would, I just, just, you know, just, just, I heard it 30, but I only saw 41. And yes, I guess this, no, you're right. Uh, and then I, and then it was, and then it added up to 42. So, um, but I think that in our original proposal, we put in 30. So then we were going to go back to the 30. Okay. Um, when we put in the EOI, the expression of interest. And we then, can also just, do a technical right. assistant request too, right? Isn't there a technical assistant money in here for so, for so we're just putting in the the because there was two we were doing two and we backed up to one and we backed it up to one yeah, yeah. so I and I think that that's where the some of the numbers okay got a little confused and, and I guess my second question I made missed this earlier so the description again I just took a quick look at it really talks about you know reviewing zoning to create you know, potential better opportunities for affordable housing within yes. the town of Southboro um, with no real reference to 21 Highland. So are we not allocating any funds to, I know that, you know, Tom and Jesse and folks had done that study, right? More internal. Yep. Are we not focused on, you know, further advancing the work on 21 Highland as part of this, or is that a separate thing later? Just was curious because it, it seemed more focused on, you know, zoning related, you know, relief versus, you know, feasibility study or furthering 21 Highland, which again is probably our best opportunity. So I yeah. just wanted to make sure the language is broad enough or or are we um, or is it the second thing that we decided not to go with? I'm just curious. I could definitely, you know, I think that two things. I think that we we need to find funding for an in-depth feasibility study just for 21 Highland as a scope, right? And I think that that project in and of itself could be again upwards of twenty thousand dollars, right? Um, and so this was more broadly written, but we could um, identify that as a parcel. You know, obviously, like we're going to be uploading parts of the subcommittee report, and I think I did mention it sort of briefly. Um, but we could just say that you know we we also want them to look at that as well. But I just wanted to make sure that this scope stayed more broad. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Doug. Yeah, I was, what was you say? I mean, I, I mean, I definitely like the broad nature. We talked about accessory dwelling units and a few other things, right? Um, so that makes sense, right? Again, I guess a couple of questions I have is, what do we think the likelihood of the award or award amount would be, right? Just you know, curious again. You guys backed it down to thirty, but you know, should we be increasing it to try to fit both of these more broad, you know, two different scopes in it? You know, one broad zoning overview and one more focused on Twenty One Highland, or just asking the group generally, like how do you want to approach this? And I also, I just don't have enough experience to know that, you know, with the one stop, like, you know, is, is a 30 to 40 amount pretty common. And once you get above that, you're really not likely going to be successful. So just more for background, because obviously the goal here is to be successful. Um, but again, if we don't get enough funds to look at 21 Highland, then we're basically almost punting for another year and, you know, want to make sure that, we, you know, just, you know, curious of the group's thoughts about how we're approaching zoning as well as 21 Highland collectively. Sure, that makes sense. Sarah, one of the grants that you had mentioned um, at our last meeting 
um, was for the feasibility, was for a feasibility study. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but that I, my recollection is one of those grants was for that. Do you there recall was a, which one that was? I don't recall the name of it. There was one that I identified for um, a lead paint feasibility, you know, it was like, so it was lead specific feasibility study. Um, so that would be just for like the building at 21 Highland, um, which I think we should go for. But I, I have not yet identified and I keep researching, you know, an overall large scale feasibility study for the site, you know, so that will include, um, you know, like soil assessment and, the, and those types of things. Building costs, um, all that stuff. Yes, exactly. You know, and, and sir, dovetailing on that, I, I, I guess I might to, to go to Doug's question, throwing it out to the to the group. I had sort of thought definitely that this is, I guess, in my mind, de de a separate grant application for the zoning study and the feasibility. Although I, I'm with Doug, I, I hope we're still we still have the feasibility study for 21 Highland on the radar screen. Yes. One thing I wanted to, that just clicked in my mind is you, you said the deadline is coming up like this Friday. What's that deadline for? Is that a deadline? Would that also be a deadline for the, for the feasibility grant? No, this is, that's a different stop. deadline. Okay. Gotcha. Just, just the one stop. Yep. So just the one stop. So, you know, for feasibility grant funding, we'll, we'll, again, there's no time limit that gotcha. No, Cause I, I sort of see the feasibility grant as a, as a separate uh, item yeah. than trying to shoehorn into a uh, funding for study of our zoning bylaws in general. Yeah. I mean, it seems like they're a little bit incongruous. Right. And I think that, you know, there is a, I think that the feasibility study for 21 Highland is extremely important, but I think that if we don't get the zoning stuff squared away, right, we'll still have those challenges after the feasibility study is done because of- I, still, I sort of think they're parallel. They both they both right. need to be done and Chicken I don't in think the 21 egg Highland kind of is necessarily <laughs> dependent on the zoning being changed because they can yeah. still do as a 40B. Oh, but yeah. I yeah, still think for our purpose for Shopsy, you know, the zoning needs to be addressed as, as well. As a, Agreed. Yeah. Say. One thing I would add on too is the, the Healy administration, obviously, and uh, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll are heavily focused on housing production. And so one thing I would say is that, you know, it's opportune time for South yes. Coral. They're, they're serious about, you know, 21 Highland to, you know, seek funding for the feasibility study. And again, it doesn't need to be through the one stop. I just want to make sure that we're not, by not including yeah. it, you know, we're, you know, we're, it's like, punting it for a year. But if that's more of a rolling type thing that we can apply for at any time, then, then I'm totally fine. I just want to make sure I understood how we were seeking sources of funding and not to miss the opportunity to get more funding, particularly from this administration to at least, you know, because Southport has an asset that they might be contemplating. And again, this is up to more than just us, the whole town. But if we're contemplating converting it into housing, I think that's going to resonate very well, um, at least for study dollars at this point. Just so you all know, um, I have asked Sarah in her research for grants. She had identified, I believe it was four grants. Um, I asked her to go forward with those applications and get those in. And then when that's done, I've asked her to send you guys copies of whatever she's taken. I think we should take advantage of every opportunity, whatever the grant is, if we could use it for housing or to help benefit us going forward with housing, I've asked her to go ahead and apply. Um, so just so you know, that's where we're at Great. right now. We're kind of scurrying around, trying to find grants everywhere you can, she can, but um, I've told her to apply for them, so. And, and Tom, just to your point about 21 <laughs> Highland, so um, Select Board is having a, our next meeting is on the 6th, and then after that, we're having a goal setting meeting on the, the 13th. We're going to discuss our you know overall goals for the next year. And I certainly anticipate um, affordable housing is going to be a real focus of that. And so certainly I have not forgot about, um, you know, moving forward with kind of a next step and thinking about different funding sources. And then also um, the, the next meeting after that on the 20th, um, our state representative and state senator are going to be at the select board uh, meeting. And, you know, that's another opportunity to press upon our, our legislators, um, our desire for more support for affordable housing. And I know um, Senator Eldridge in particular is a real, has been a longtime advocate uh, for affordable housing. And um, I actually know him because we grew up in Acton together way back in the day. So. Oh, really? <laughs> yep. 
That's great to hear, Andrew. Music to Warriors, good to have you. I know you're a big supporter of affordable housing too, so it's good to have you as our bridge to the to the select board for sure. Okay. And you know, Al Hamilton now is on the is going to be coming to the board. I think he's a real advocate for. Yep, he's, and well. he is a, one of the attendees too. Mm, excellent. Oh, on on this at this meeting. Yep. He's in oh, that. gotcha. Good. <laughs> Welcome, Al. Area. Okay. Um, anybody else have any question? Any other questions for Sarah? Or comments? Any more discussion on the one stop? Okay. Now, Sarah, any other grant updates? <laughs> I think that covers most of it. Um, so yeah, what, you know, once we get some of these rolling, I'll definitely um, send them out as soon as possible, and you know, we'll finalize um, finalize things as they come. Okay, and as applications go in, um, again, if you wouldn't mind sending an email out and including that application, so that every member of this board is up to date on what's happening. For sure. Okay, the DHCD subsidized housing inventory uh, has not come in from the state yet. Surprise, surprise. So I am waiting for that information. And as soon as I do get it, it'll just give us an update on where we're at um, with the state. I believe we had dropped to 8.3% out of the 10% from the 8.6. So hopefully that number has moved up. But as soon as I get that information, I will. Hey, uh Madam Chair, do we have any idea how that happened? Probably I more, have no more idea. production of nine hundred thousand dollars single family homes causes the ratios to get out of whack. There you go. Thanks. Okay. Um, MBTA communities update. Jesse, do you have anything for us on that with the planning board? Uh, we have an upcoming meeting. Uh, with a representative from CHAPA. Um, CHAPA is going to basically be helping us. It's a state agency, and they're going to be helping us do um, the, the public forums in, um, in September. Um, we basically can, came to a consensus at the last planning board meeting to um, have a pre-public forum meeting with CHAPA um in august um and sort of in advance of that we have a representative coming on Is that june 12th thank you dorian it's june 12th right so you all i i sent jesse had contacted me and i sent an email to everyone um if you wanted to attend um yeah it would be great if we could have a shopsy quorum yeah, it would be nice, but I would have to post a meeting. So if you're able to attend the June 12th meeting, uh, please let me know because I have to post a meeting if we have a quorum. In any event, because also uh, the planning board invited uh, the select board to attend as well. So I, I, you, I, I will be there. I guess I'll be there in maybe two different capacities. That's okay. We'll take you. <laughs> I, will, I can make it too. I'll be there. Yeah, I'll be there too. All right, so we have a quorum, so I will post a meeting. And Jesse, can I just add a, a quick quick footnote on, on whatever your discussions with the planning board? You know, just just one, yeah, after our last joint meeting with the planning board and the select board and, and SHOPC and capital planning, you know, we were talking about, I think the plan was at that point to make most of the new zoning, de or zoning overlay district the EMC property with some sort of, you know, perfunctory minimum level of, of requirements around, around the actual MBTA station. And one thing just to keep in mind, I, I, I bet Mimi's probably tuned into this because she, she seems to know the, know, the, uh, know the community bylaw pretty well, but there is a statement in there in the regs about DHCD not wanting the, you know, the entire zoning district or most of the entire zoning district i'm not sure if they make that distinction to be focused on one development project that the town plans to approve you know they they they, they want it to be more you know they don't want it to be sort of spot zoning type of overlay district that's specially designed for one you know one project they want it to be more more dispersed so just just a thought in terms of how the zoning districts is, is conceived. I think if it's 
all or mostly all that one project on EMC. I'm not sure if it's going to be well received by the by DACD. So at the last meeting, we had um, the ma uh, the most recent map that Colleen had had uh, formulated, and most of it was um, a strip of strip of land on Parkerville adjacent to the train station. Hmm. Most of those 50 acres of zoning districts are 50 acres. I don't, acre that's a good question. Um, that sounds like the original map Sarah had done. There was- there You was, mean I Parkerville think, or Southville? Did I say Parkerville? Yeah, you Parkerville. meant Southville Road. Sorry, that's, wrong, wrong day. That's the old map that Sarah yeah. had done. Southville. Um, well, all the more reason for us to you know, and thank you for bringing this up, Tom. Yeah, yeah. just to delve into it a little bit more on the uh, 12th. But um, yeah, I, and I'm going from memory. I don't have the map. Yeah, no, no worries. I don't, I don't, yeah, no worries. Just throwing it out there just for discussion purposes. And the other point for general discussion is it's 50 acres minimum, but it's not 50 acres maximum. In other words, the zoning district doesn't doesn't need to be only 50 acres, which is pretty pretty tiny. Um, as zoning districts go. So True. Just, I mean, the idea, of course, is to get this, um, you know, past town meeting. Uh, but I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Um, uh, Tom, so a couple other points of information might be relevant here. You know, a Ferris development group, David Ferris's um, company. So they, they have um, asked to come before the select board um, next week to discuss and just very generally present um, two proposed 40B applications that they have in mind. One is on 120 Turnpike Road, so that's closer to where like uh, Shrubs and Trees is. And then 250 Turnpike Road, which I think is the uh, the CAS building. So that's another thing that's kind of on the horizon, just wanted to let you know about. Yeah, cool. and nice. I, I mean, also, um, I saw in the um, one-stop application, Sarah, you know, one of the things that um, you were going to ask the uh, consultant to look into is accessory dwelling units. And Jesse, I know that this has been discussed a little bit on the uh, the, the planning board. I'm actually um, scheduled to meet with Deb Demure and, um, and uh, Doris Cahill tomorrow about... Um, about that as well, because I know there had been, it's something, frankly, I've been talking about for a while and have not really moved forward in any substantive way, but um, hopefully tomorrow will be a start. And, um, you know, I just wanted to mention that because, so we can coordinate that, you know? And what, what, what or would that be, uh, would this be like a Warren article to make this, is this separate and distinct from anything else we're talking about or? Well, I don't know. Uh, I just want, wanted to raise the topic because I don't know where, uh, you know, the planning board stands in this. You know, one of the things that we, um, I think the select board is going to discuss is, you know, do we have enough stuff to talk about to put on a warrant for a fall town meeting? There's a, we have a date set for a fall town meeting. I think it's October 17th. You would need to have enough stuff to justify having Fall town meeting where we don't we're not legally required to do it, and it also has to be in probably things that are exciting enough that would actually bring people and uh, have a um, reroute a street that'll get people. Yeah, so if you think of something controversial to put on to, to well, bring people, <laughs> have that at the very end. Um, but in all seriousness, I think by right accessory dwellings, yeah, would would bring people. Okay. Out for and against. Okay. I would think. I personally would probably support it. I would think that'd be part of the study. In certain, of the in certain so, districts? In certain districts? Or? That's a good question. Yeah. Okay. That's something to noodle. All right. I mean, I don't know. I That's... This is something that I have not really understood as why the town and I, I think we're digressing off the agenda a little bit but yeah slightly but I'll let you go with it go ahead <laughs> well I, I haven't really ever understood why 
why we have such a stringent process for a accessory dwelling unit um, approval. Yeah. This sounds like it falls under the one-stop application we're about to have to have a consultant go through our zoning bylaws and weed out things like that. You know, that's probably a subject matter that they'll come up with and say, hey, what, you know, accessory dwellings, dwellings would be a nice way to create more housing, but you, there's, there's such a barrier in your zoning bylaws to that. Sarah, if, if we apply, we get the grant, and then how, do you know what how quickly you would expect the consultant to complete their work? No, it, no idea. It's got this vague awards, uh, you know, or will come out in the fall <laughs> is like all it all right, says, okay. you know. So uh, I'm not, not, not feasible. Sure. But you'd have to um, find you'd have to find a consultant, and I mean, it's right. I don't think that's something it has to go out to bid because it'd be over. It's over the ten thousand mark, so it yeah. have to bid. So that's going to be it's a process. So one thing I saw there was an article recently in California, which does allow it now statewide. There was a major change in their legislation, um, you know, and a lot of them are getting permanent, but they they were capping the size of the ADUs yeah. tonight. So there's a lot of ways. Or this would be great for the consultant to look at too. Is you know, I think they were limited to 800 square feet. Um, there was one bedroom only, so it really was meant to be targeted towards you know somebody's you know parent right or grandparent or you know returning student you know um you know additional income and it doesn't necessarily be in all districts either but again not to further digress but i think it'd be great to consult to really look at best practices too because obviously you know you want it to be successful you're going to take it to town meeting and I'm not saying this works in all places in southborough but there are some really interesting parameters a lot more education can happen around this consultant too just for background that's interesting doug i i wonder uh, why you know in what districts wouldn't it be sensible? I don't. I, I'm not under, even understanding. Maybe I'm being naive, but I don't. Okay. I don't understand why we would have specific districts for something like that. Well, no, and Jesse, this is more. You're more experienced with the planning board and more closer to the pulse of zoning changes, probably than I am. But you, you're right. I mean, some of the districts might make you know it may make sense in all districts as long as it still meets the requirements, right? Um, so. I do know that once it got passed in some towns, it became, you know, I would say, I want to say popular, popular because it's it's a means for many families to keep families, to extended families together, additional income, and it definitely helps solve the housing crisis, right? Because people are, you know, these aren't big units. Um, so, but anyways, just something else to think about. But yeah, Jesse, it's a great question. I'm more just, I feel like in any town, zoning changes in general are always sensitive topics, right? So that's all. <laughs> It's interesting that you mentioned that uh, California made it a statewide um, by right thing. Yeah. Um, I can say just professionally, I've seen things, <clears throat> they become more common and um, they're more broadly accepted um, than they have been in the past, yeah. at least for residential lending. So. Yeah. And to be clear, yeah, I don't but know. The, but it, it, you, yeah. you remind so. me of that, Doug, because the, the restrictions are very similar to what was in that um, legislation you just mentioned. Yep. Yeah. And, and it, yeah. And I don't recall all the details of the California legislation. I do know, though, that ADUs in the state went from like 6,000 per year to like over 20,000, like overnight. Wow. Um, so it was a, now this is California, the biggest state, one of the biggest states in the country. But it was, anyways, it was substantive. That there was really demand and interest from homeowners to put them in. That's all. Yeah, I mean, I can just say anecdotally, when I was on the ZBA for five years, and Andrew and I were on the ZBA, there were a number of accessory dwelling <laughs> unit applications that came before us, and you know, they there the zoning by bylaws were, you know, were something of an impediment, and some of them got to be controversial. Which you know, what percent? What percentage of them? Uh, were approved, if you had to guess. You know, I think the, the ZB at that point tended to be to be air on the side of approving people, allowing people to do to do stuff like that. But it was more like investors. Like I remember, the bar leaders came a couple of times to put accessory dwellings on, on properties that they owned, more as an investment purpose, not not for a you know your your your. Your, your grandmother, you know, it's easier to approve it for a grandma. It's another one. It's 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 something a little bit different to approve it for a developer that wants to make money off it. But I still think it still creates a new housing unit. 
you know. Um, so I think that that's where the distinction in my recollection was, Jesse. It was harder for the in investors to get things approved than it was for family members. Well, and, but, and that's really, I mean, the spirit of it is um, not to create a two unit building in where they're when it's zoned or deeded as a one unit, it's a true. And that's why I think those size restrictions make a lot of sense. Yeah. That is kind of the point of the bylaw. That it? All set? I don't know what that had to do with MBTA communities. But that's all right. You went off a little on tangent. We're good. Um, so, Alex is no longer on the board and he was the housing authority representative. So um, Karina reached out to Bill Scanlon who is the head of the housing authority and they reached out to me. I talked to John, John, since John is on the housing authority and on Shopsy, I asked um, if they would appoint him as the new representative for their, for their board. And I have not heard back from anybody. Um, I've actually texted John and reached out to John and I still haven't heard back from him. So I'm not sure where we're uh, where we are with that, but I do believe that Bill Scanlon was inclined to appoint John, have the board vote and make him the new representative. So- Is John still on, uh, on uh, is he still technically a member of this committee? Yeah, he's been missing a lot of meetings. So I'm gonna have to give him a call. I, I text him, I, I, I text him at the, in the middle of this meeting and I still haven't heard back from him. I'm like, hey, where are you? So I don't know. I'll have to well, I know him. he got in he got in a different job that um is yeah. very demanding and his work schedule has changed. That's why we do our meetings the time we're doing them now to accommodate John. So and he's still having a hard time making it. But I'll give him a call and find out what's going on and hopefully he can be with us on June the 12th with the planning board at least. Um and we'll go from there. Okay, um, last thing on the agenda is board reorganization. Now we can do it now or we could wait till June. It's up to you guys, but we have to pick a chair um, and we should probably do it tonight since most of us are here. I'd like to make a motion that uh, we reappoint Dorian Jasinski as chair of uh, Shopsy. Second. Okay, so you roll call vote. Is there anyone else who wants to do it? Or, you know, Dorian, I know you've been uh, it's doing it for a while. Is there anyone else that's interested? Nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no further. Don't all talk at once. <laughs> okay, it's a roll call vote. Yeah. Jesse. Aye. Uh, Tom? Aye. Doug? Aye. Andrew? Aye. And uh, Dorianne, I will abstain. Okay, I guess I'm the chair for next year too. <laughs> Thanks guys. Um, all right, next meeting, June. Do we have, we have the one-stop grant that's pressing. Um, that's gonna Dorian, be the sheriff. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. Um, do we need to appoint a vice chair? Oh, yes. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. You know what? I'm just used to okay. John being there and be appointing John. Okay. So we do need I a vice chair. I'm so sorry. Yes, we do. I, I, I cannot do it because I'm now vice chair of planning board. And I really can't assume just for my own sanity and time management. I can't vice chair this committee also. And Andrew is the new chair of this board of selectmen. So Andrew, you oh, congratulations. That probably that probably that disqual again. disqualifies me. Oh, okay. it does? Okay. <laughs> so well, Doug, I, I congratulations, by the way. I think you both would be great. I know you both are very busy. So who would like to step up to the plate? It's got to be one of the three of you. And Jesse's already said no. So Doug <laughs> or Tom, you're on the hook. Or we can leave it vacant for now, I guess. And then John Wood can't do it? Well, he's not making the meeting, so I think that we should probably pick somebody. <laughs> well, so just out of curiosity, what does it actually entail? So when I make an emotion, <laughs> not a lot, not a lot, because I I just get everything done. If there has to be a discussion, I usually make a phone call and talk to the vice chair and get an opinion. 
and we discuss it. We come up with a. Yeah, please note that Dorian. I think your I think Dorian's attendance is perfect, and she has <laughs> never had to recuse from anything. So the vice chair duty really is very light in this. Community. It really is light because unless there's something going on and and we need to talk about it and make it a joint decision and then go forward with that decision, it's it's pretty easy. I mean, going forward with all this housing stuff, um, if we get something going, there'll probably be more stuff to do, but. Um, for the most part, it's just, I guess you're supposed to cover meetings and have it, have your ear ready for discussions. But it can also be helpful in, you know, thinking about other things to put on the agenda. Cause yep. I know, you know, Doug, you're really tuned into, you work in this industry, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So we should nominate Doug. <laughs> well, I'll I be definitely to, to Tom, but okay. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. <laughs> I think Doug would be a good guy for it. I think he's he's uh, a big name in the real estate industry. He's handsome. He has a good beard. I think he meets all the criteria for a, for an excellent vice chair. Of and therefore, vice eminently chair. more qualified than me. <laughs> okay, so um, gentlemen. I nominate, I nominate Doug uh, Mance for vice chair. Okay. Second. We have a second by Jesse. Okay, any more discussion? Okay, this is roll call vote. Andrew. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Tom. Aye. Dorian is aye. Doug. I think I have to abstain, right? So I'll abstain. You should abstain, yes. Yeah. It just you, can vote, you can vote for yourself. Perfect vice yourself. chair <laughs> conduct right there. Perfect. Already Throw some conviction. Vote for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Jesse, thank you. I totally forgot because I'm just used to John just being there and, and doing it. So um, thank you. Thank you for the reminder. Um, okay, we need we do need to pick a new chair. I mean, uh, a new meeting. Here's John. Hey, John. John, where have you been? Are you the new housing rep? Impeccable you're timing. Oh, you're, you're mute, John. John, you're muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. There sorry he is. about that. Good morning. Good afternoon. Sorry, I just got home. <laughs> um, at our June at our June thirteenth meeting, it should be official. So we had to reach out and check with uh, to find out how it works and all that. And uh, the vote will be in on June thirteenth. Okay. John Housing Rep. Okay. So um, when that happens, can you just let me know? Yeah, I will. Okay, perfect. All right, so um, we are at the point where we're picking a, a date for June. Gentlemen, anybody, you guys are, your schedules are way tougher than mine. So you have work schedules I, to consider. I got nothing anymore. I have no idea. I mean, this is fiscal year end for uh, all my clients, so. I have no idea when I'm ever available, but I'll make it. All right. Um, when does when is school out? Like the twenty third, twenty second, I think. And the, yeah, I was gonna say end of June. Like okay, last. so this is a so Andrew, you have meetings June twentieth, the thirteenth, and the sixth. Well, you're just going right in a row there. Okay, so we're going to have to move to a different night for Andrew. Um, how about if we do Wednesday, either Wednesday the 14th or the Wednesday the 21st of June? 21st are, are would be we better. Are we meeting on the 12th? We're just... well, that's a, yeah, but that's a joint uh, meeting. That's a joint thing. Oh, anymore. gotcha. Yeah. And this yeah. meeting is going to be very light because we're going to – have the official vote from the housing authority for John. Um, and we'll have updates hopefully from the one stop. We'll have the um, housing inventory um, done. We may have some MBTA stuff. We can discuss what happened at the meeting with the, the CHAPA representative. So the meeting should be, which shouldn't be more than for like 45 minutes. Kind of like tonight. Um, you know, I like them short and sweet. So, um, do, do either of those dates work? Wednesday the 14th or the 21st? John's 21st is good. Okay, yeah, why don't we do the uh, 21st then? 
Yeah, because uh, I am traveling the 15th through. Yeah, that'll work. The 15th, I'll be back on Sunday night. So. Okay, so we'll do 7.30 on Wednesday, June 21. Andrew, are you okay with meetings yeah. two in a row? Yeah. Okay. All right, gentlemen. Thanks for the nomination and the appointment again. <laughs> Congratulations, <Yeah>. Doug. <laughs> Doug, um, what are you? He's the vice chair. John, you can tell him how hard you work. <laughs> it's just, yeah, you're going to be brutal. It's brutal, man. <laughs> John, that's not helpful. <laughs> All right, guys, have a great rest of the week. Um, I think we need to uh, motion to adjourn. Oh, yeah, motion to adjourn. I always do that, don't I? We have a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor? Doug? Aye. Jesse? Aye. Andrew? Aye. Tom? Aye. John? Aye. Dorian's eye. Thank you, Jesse. I always forget that part. All right, guys. Take care. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.